All right, guys, welcome to How's It Made. Today we have the Amazon Echo Dot second generation smart speaker with Alexa functionality. Uh, right off the bat on the outside, we see a number of different finishes um, from a very high gloss on the sides to uh, a, matte, a matte finish on the top and a very velvety matte rubber texture on the bottom. Um, and you wouldn't think a lot goes into that, but it actually does. The mold finishes that you have to do to get those various um, appearances uh, are, are actually pretty important. Uh, this, that looks like a D2 mold finish or, or similar. Uh, this looks like an A1 or an A2, A1 mold finish. Um, and then this is rubber rubber can take finishes uh, a little bit differently than plastics do. So that could be a D2 or, or a D1 or maybe even a C finish in the mold. But uh, but very, very um, pleasing uh, to the to the eye uh, with the, the contrasting finishes. So a lot of a lot of effort and technical expertise uh, actually goes into to making products look good that, uh, that you might not expect. So actually has a, a good heavy weight to it. I didn't expect that. I didn't expect it uh, to quite have have that that much bulk to it, but uh, you know figured just it'd be a light plastic housing and circuit board and uh, it doesn't have a battery in it. it takes outside power. so that's uh, that's interesting. It has a very a quality quality feel to it. Well, so let's uh, I don't I don't see immediately how to take it apart. Which is another thing that um, design engineers would put a lot of effort into uh, is hiding how it's put together so it looks like uh, it kind of hides the manufacturing processes and the assembly processes. So, you know, somebody who doesn't know anything about how things are made uh, might think, you know, that looks like it's, you know, polished out of a solid chunk of obsidian or something, but really it's just cheap ABS plastic probably. Uh, but so let's see if we can figure out how to get it apart and take a look at what's inside. All right, so there we have a, a ribbon connector going down to the lower electronics assembly. All right, so let's let's check out the main housing first. So that's an electrical connection. So there's something down in there. Okay, so injection molded part uh, made out of a material that accepts a really good gloss finish. So that's probably ABS or a polycarbonate ABS blend. It looks like it has a RFID chip uh, built into it. Uh, very similar to how, you know, textbooks that they don't want you to steal or uh, I think cell phones and tablets have those built in as well. So not sure what that's for, but uh, yeah, pretty standard injection molded part. All right, and so this is the part that came out with a, a electrical connection built into it. Okay, so apparently the speaker is housed inside of here. And what I'm assuming why they went to the trouble of putting it inside of this two-part assembly is to get some sound wave amplification similar to Bose technology. That's it's not really cutting edge anymore. But back when Bose did it, you know, decades ago, it was really cutting edge. They got uh, deep bass sound out of a little tiny stereo. Uh, sounded like it was a stereo, you know, five times bigger uh, because of sound amplification techniques. Uh, you know, bouncing the the sound waves off of in certain directions and in certain diameter uh, tubes and whatnot to to get an effect. So that's probably what's going on there. All right, so let's work from the top down. So this is the the circuit board that houses the buttons, and those are just uh, 
metal tack switches. Uh, very simple, simple, durable design. Really cheap to manufacture. Um, and that's a your so your top uh, user interface uh, PCB. Um, yeah, so I'm sure uh, a circuit board engineer would have a lot more to say about this, but uh, I don't. So, all right, and then this was separating uh, the speaker box from the rest of it, so it's probably a a sound deadening uh, material, maybe butyl rubber, rubber uh, to keep from having that plastic vibrate sound um, that would really make the products sound and feel cheap. Oh, that is really cool. You see how that, how they built in the spring, spring action? That is cool. So that, that's a, a stamped sheet metal piece feels like and that is that's that's a example of an, another compliant mechanism that uh, uh, talked about those the last episode and compliant mechanisms are cheap um, that's that's normally the reason you make a, a, a build in built-in compliance into a design is because of how cheap it is and you don't get much more cost effective than than a you know, laser cut pieces, piece of sheet metal that provides that button spring back. That's, uh, you know, a, little, a silly consumer electronic has some pretty cool engineering in it. Stuff, uh, stuff you wouldn't expect. Um, and another injection molded part. That's, I didn't expect to have, see a, a very many manufacturing processes, you know, present in a consumer electronics uh, piece of equipment um, so and that's pretty much it and you know injection molded all injection molding well what I didn't expect to see was this is a die cast part um, either you know aluminum or zinc or magnesium um, and it looks like it's acting as a heat sink To this circuit board yeah see that that paste that's a, that's a heat sink paste but the the big mystery here is there is no way that enough power can go through that micro USB which let me look that up real quick all right guys yeah so the max wattage that a micro USB can handle is 60 watt and that's 3 amps at 20 volts and uh, if you don't know anything about um, electrical, electrical engineering or heat dissipation basically amps is what produce that produces the heat so the the max amps that can be going through this circuit board according to the specs I found on a micro USB port which is the only source of power for this is three amps and there is no way that you need a heat sink this big for three amps at any voltage really um, I've I've designed products that have uh, circuit boards that run 20 amps at 12 volts and with no heat sinks whatsoever it was driving driving a DC brush motor um, and it didn't need any heat sinks at all to be, uh, to stay cool. Um, it's duty cycle was, you know, intermittent where this is, is continuous, but I still can't imagine that you need a heat sink this big. So really what I think this is, is if with just these parts, you know, there's not a lot of weight. There's not a lot of weight to these parts. And you noticed when, uh, when I was taking, uh, right before I took it apart, I mentioned how heavy it was. And it really made it feel more expensive than it actually is to produce. So all of these parts are really cheap to produce. All the expense is inside the circuit boards. That's where all the money's at. But those don't weigh a lot. So all these parts that actually went into the mechanical assembly are really, really cheap and really lightweight. And so what I think this is doing is much more than being a heat sink. It's just to add some weight to the overall assembly 
Um, and that's, uh, you might, you know, kind of uh, dismiss that as, oh, that's not, uh, that's, you know, that's a waste of material or um, that's not engineering. Well, the customer decides, you know, what, what value something has. And if you make something that feels chintzy and lightweight, even though it's got, you know, high dollar technology inside of it, and, uh, you know, I, I don't even want to think about the number of programming hours that went into making the software that's inside of here. Um, so all that, that cost and expense and that, that intellectual property that went into, uh, these, uh, relatively lightweight parts right here, the customer is never going to see those, but what they will see is how heavy something is. And I think that is all that this piece is doing is just adding some weight to to give it uh that that feel and that that's a part of product engineering you got to make people happy with their purchase if they feel like they didn't get what they paid for then they're going to go somewhere else so this is as much you know a part of a product engineer's job as it is as anything else is so um one other thing that's pretty cool about see uh Printed circuit boards have the traces built into the layers and a little bit of synergy they did here was I'm pretty sure that these are antennas. See that pattern built in? Uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, maybe both. I'm not sure. But that's really cool. So instead of having to add a component on top that was the um, antenna, they built it right in because and it probably didn't increase the cost one penny uh, because they ba you basically pay for the circuit board and the amount of metal uh, I think that's inside the circuit board and the number of layers you know you can have a multi-layer board um, uh, but so they just removed some metal and made those that those pieces of metal be at the right distance apart to receive the wavelength of either Wi-Fi or or Bluetooth um, and so that's a that's a good piece of synergy that uh, costs no money so they saved the money of the extra antenna and they didn't have to actually see all the all the little components on that there those have to be soldered on with something called a wave solder machine and um, you know that takes time not much but none is better than some so they save the labor and the component uh, having to to populate this board with an extra component uh, and so that's uh, that's pretty cool. Save some money. All right. Um, I think that that covers it, guys. Um, product doesn't have to be complicated to have serious uh, technical expertise built into it. And uh, that's why I wanted to, to take one of these apart. Uh, kind of a deviation from our uh, from the, the more mechanical uh highly traditionally engineered stuff this is kind of engineered in a in a different way it's it, it there's just as much expertise that went into making this it's just a different kind of expertise so i hope you enjoyed it guys uh that was that's my take on the uh amazon alexa echo dot second generation um please share subscribe like hit the little bell icon uh so that you get notifications uh i've plan on having uh, at least one review come out every week for the foreseeable future. So um, if you like uh, this review, subscribe and uh, hopefully come back for more. All right. Thanks, guys.